So factoring trinomials. Um, I, historically, uh, some students have issues with this, but um, or issues with factoring trinomials, but uh, others do perfectly fine. So let's see what we can do here. Um, when we're talking about trinomial, here's an example. x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now, you know, a whole pile of you are seeing that and going, yeah, I know how to, I know what I need to do to factor that. Um, that may be uh, true. That's great. Um, some of you might not, and uh, we need to talk about this. So um, understand there are many trinomials that are the result of a product of two binomials. If it's factorable, that'll be the case. Um, and so we, in often case, we want to find or want to know what those two uh, binomials are. For instance, when we're trying to solve this trinomial or if we're trying to find its roots, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, this one's pretty easy, but I want to give, I want to do something that is a little bit more uh, generic to talk about and something that may help us understand where these numbers come from. So let's do this X plus B times, and we'll come back to that x plus b, freaking out again, x plus d. And so let's actually do this distribution out. So x times x, and that's freaking out again, x times x is going to be x squared. And then x times d is going to be plus dx. And then b times x is going to be bx. And then these last two terms, uh, b times d is b times d. So remember factoring by grouping, I can group these two terms and factor out something common to them, and that would be the x. So let's see this uh, x squared plus the factored x uh, plus bd back here. And I'm gonna do uh, the uh, b plus d in orange so we can see the difference there. So this becomes, these two things become critical. So uh, let's go back and look at, um, x squared, that was in blue. Let's go back and look at x squared minus 4x plus 3. So note that this end term, this constant at the end, it doesn't have to be a constant, it could be 3y squared and then we have some crazy middle stuff going on. But this is the product of these two numbers, b and d. This is the product of these two numbers here. And if I may, this coefficient is actually the sum of those two numbers. This is the actually the sum of those two numbers. Going all the way up there, but yeah. This coefficient of the middle term is the sum of B and D, note. And 3 is the product of B and D. So if we know that, we can take these values and figure out what all this how this all fits together. So we can take this number three, and it's a real easy one at this point, but um, others get more complicated and as the numbers get larger, there are many more combinations. In this case, what numbers can I multiply together to get positive three? Well, I can multiply one times three, but one times three do not add up to be negative four, so the sign does matter. But what about negative one times negative three? Negative one times negative three is of course positive three, and their sum is negative four. So that seems to work. That'll tell, you, tell us the values of B and D. And it doesn't matter which one you choose. So take that information and we get X plus B, which is minus one, and X plus D, which is minus three. And so we can always, almost every problem in this course, you can do a check. X times X is X squared. X times negative three is minus three X minus X plus three. And notice here are those two numbers, and we're gonna sum them, x squared minus four x plus three. And it works, check. So I'm, I'm doing this thing with the letters so you can see it's more transparent where the numbers come from. And it'll be, we're gonna get more complicated right in a second, all right? So now, what if we have something like this? Four y squared minus 11 y plus six. You should pause and think about what's different between this one and that one. Now that we're back, after you paused or didn't, what do I know? Note that this has a coefficient in front of the, in front of the first squared term or the highest degree term. Um, that causes problems because now the numbers don't interact the same way. 
Uh, let's go to letters. I know you probably don't like the letters, but let's go to letters anyway, because I like to torture you. Um, AX plus B, and let's go CX plus D. I tried to keep the B and the D the same so we can see where these numbers are going. So now, AX times CX, I get ACX squared. AX times D, and I get plus ADX. B times CX, and I get plus BCX. And B times D is still B times D like we had above. Now, those numbers, uh, we'll see what happens here. I'm going to factor away, factor this x again. So I'm going to have a c x squared plus x plus b d, and we'll have those numbers factored. A d plus b c. It's not going to get too crazy. We're not going to go much further with this, but I, hopefully you can understand that um, this is way more complicated. And if I just simply looked at the product of BD, so in other words, like in the other problem, I took the three and I just figured out what the factors were for three right here, right? I found the factors of three. If I do that, it will not incorporate the values for A and C. And so something's missing. There's a piece that's missing. So here's the methodology, and I don't know, I, here's the methodology. We take these two values and we multiply them together, AC times BD. And then we find factors that sum to that, because you'll have these two pieces summing. And it doesn't, it's not exactly the same, but we'll get there. Um, we've, in the past, we've called this factoring by grouping, because we are factoring by grouping, because of this grouping, we factored out the X, and then there's another time we, uh, well, there's some similar stuff. So um, yeah, you're gonna do that. So it's called factoring by grouping. So let's do this with the example, and we won't talk about the letters anymore. So what was my example again? 4y squared minus 11y. 4y squared minus 11y plus 6, I think it was, right? Yep. Okay. So like I said, we're going to take these two values, and we're going to find their product. So 4 times 6 gives us, uh, I shouldn't use that. 4 times 6 equals, what is that? 4 times 6 is 30, or excuse me, 24, right? So now let's find factors of 24, and I always draw this line, but whatever. Negative one times negative 24. Do those two numbers sum to a negative 11? No. Negative two times negative 12. Do negative 12 and negative two sum to negative 11? No. How about negative three times negative eight? Negative three times, ne or times negative eight is in fact 24, and negative three plus negative eight is negative 11. Woohoo! So that's it. That's our guy. So we're going to do this. Instead of, and if you want, you could hit pause and you could make these two numbers be the coefficients b and d, the constants b and d in your binomials. But it will not work because I no longer have this kind of thing again. I don't have this. This is not b and this is not d like it was in the simplified case. It's just not. Um, what they are or uh, what they inform you is how to split this middle term. This is actually, one of these values is, uh, what was it, AC? I'm sorry, AD, and one of these numbers is BC. It doesn't matter which one, it all works out. But um, these two numbers, these two values, are summed together to be that. So we'll just split that middle term up. What I mean by that, let's, I'll just stop talking and let's just do it. Uh, let's do this, four y squared, and then let's take this negative three. I'm going to, have to slap another color on top of it. Negative three, negative three. And so that's minus three y, okay? And then, uh, I don't know, uh, purple. Um, this negative eight, we're going to go minus eight y. And then we'll go back to green. I don't know why I'm narrating, because I have to talk. Um, so what we did was we split up the middle term. Again, these two values that we find inform you how to split up the middle term. So now uh, we're going to factor by grouping. And how do we do that? Let's go blue. That was black. That's not going to be helpful at all. We're going to we're going to group those two and fact and pull out a greatest common factor, or factor it. And it only appears to be a y. So y, four y minus three. Okay. And then uh, this guy over here. Let's go with the hot pink. 
And so we're going to factor out a 2. 2 goes into that, 2 goes into that. And we're actually going to factor out a negative 2. So negative 2. If I factor negative 2 from negative 8y, hopefully I get 4y. Ooh, look at that. It's the same as that. And then if I factor negative 2, woo, it's going to be negative 3. And note, again, we have these two that work out. 4y minus 3. I factor that away. And if I pull that away from this guy, I'm left with a y. And if I pull it away from this guy, I'm left with a negative 2. Thank you.